There was a handout sent last week, <clears throat> the Rambam Hilfes Tshuva, Eric Aleph, and as I mentioned many times, the way the Rambam works is the Rambam wrote the Halacha Sefer Yad HaChazaka. Yad HaChazaka is a play on the words in the Torah. Hashem said that he took us out of Mitzrayim biyot chazaka, with a mighty hand. So the Rambam called his Halacha Sefer Yad HaChazaka. Yad is spelled Yudalit. The gematria of Yud Dalit is 14. Yud is 10, Dalit is 4. Aleph Beis, Gimel Dalit. Dalit is the fourth letter of the Aleph Beis. Yud is the tenth letter of the Aleph Beis. So Yud represents 10, Dalit represents 4. 10 and 4 is 14. Yad HaChazaka, and the Raman called Yad HaChazaka because he broke down all of Halacha into 14 subjects. If you go to Tveria, the place where the Rambam's kever, so as you walk up the pathway to get to his kever, it has 14, looks like flags, 14 poles, and on each pole there's the name of one of his books, and there are 14 poles there. There's Sefer, Mada, Ahava, Zman, and there are 14 subjects of all of Halacha according to the Rambam. So if you learn all Rambam, you should have found that the Rambam discusses 613 mitzvahs, because if the Rambam is codifying the halacha for every single mitzvah, including karbonas, the Beis HaMikdash, the Law of Kings, which we read about yesterday in Pasha Shoftim, special rules for kings, the halachas for a Kohen, the halachas for a Levi, the halachas of Prismila, all 613 mitzvahs, the halachas of all 613 mitzvahs, if you go cover to cover in the 14 books, you should have studied 613 mitzvahs. The Rambam, in his in unbelievable ingenuity, created a system where before every set of halachas, he tells you how many mitzvahs he's going to discuss in this particular section. So, for example, the first book of the Rambam, the first of the 14 books, is called Sefer Hamada. People like to translate that as the book of knowledge. I don't believe that's the correct definition. It's not the book of knowledge because the whole Rambam is knowledge. The whole Torah is knowledge. There's a very different meaning to Mada, which we're not going to go into right now. But they call it the book of knowledge. In the Sefer Hamada, which is book one of the 14 books. And say from Mada, the Rambam broke it down further into specific topics. So topic number one is called Yesodei HaTorah, the laws of the, funda the fundamental laws of the Torah. Hilchis Deos, Hilchis Talmud Torah, Hilchis Avodah Zorah, Hilchis Tshuva. So now, if I want to learn Hilchis Tshuva, how many mitzvahs are involved? in doing tshuva. Every topic can have multiple mitzvahs. So for example, book one, Sefer Hamada, the book of knowledge. Topic one in Sefer Hamada is Hilchas Yisodei HaTorah, fundamental, fundamental principles of the Torah. In that subtopic of fundamentals of the Torah, the Ramam says, I'm gonna discuss 10 mitzvahs. Believing in God existence, fundamental of the Torah. Belief in God's a perfect unity, fundamental to of the Torah. Loving God, fearing God, etc. So in book one, book one of the 14 books, Book of Knowledge, in that first book, there are multiple subjects. The first subject is the laws of the fundamentals of the Torah. And in that subject, there are 10 different mitzvahs that fall under the category fundamentals of the Torah. So we come now to the last topic of the first book, the book of knowledge, the very last topic in that book is Hilchas Tshuva, the laws of Tshuva. How many mitzvahs are involved in this concept called Tshuva? So the Rambam writes, Hilchas Tshuva, mitzvahs asei echos. The mitzvah of Tshuva encapsulates one mitzvah asei. There were 365 do not do's, 248 thou shalt do's. Thou shalt eat matzah on the night of the 15th of Nisan. One of the 248 to do's. 
thou shalt not eat chazer. One of the 365 thou shalt not do. Altogether 613. So the Rambam says, I'm now going to discuss the laws of tshuva. How many mitzvahs are involved in tshuva? Mitzvahs ase achas. One positive commandment. One of the 248 positive commandments is the mitzvah to do tshuva. We'll see what that means in a moment. If you have time and you don't trust the system that I just, just, uh, just talked about, you can take out a set of Rambam, put it on your desk, take out a calculator, and go to the first page of each subject. So the Rambam says, tshuva is one mitzvah, put in the number one. The Rambam says, you saw the Torah is 10, you have 11. Hilchis deos, Rambam says 11, you have 22. And do that to every single introduction, to every single subject in the Rambam. And when you finish the Rambam, you'll have on your calculator 613. So the Rambam is going to discuss in the 14 books all 613 mitzvahs. And he's going to tell you before he starts talking about a subject, how many mitzvahs are involved in what we're about to discuss. Amazingly, Hilchis Tshuva, which we think is, what's Tshuva? Tshuva is just, uh, God, I'm sorry, I'll never do it again. And al Chet The Rambam is going to spend 10 prokim, 10 chapters in discussing Tshuva, and related subjects. He's gonna spend 10 chapters on this. And these 10 chapters are dedicated to understanding one mitzvah. One of the 248 mitzvahs is to do tshuva. So the Ramam says, Hilfish tshuva, mitzvahs ase echas. The mitzvah of tshuva is one mitzvah. It's only one of the 248. It's not three of the 248. It's one of the 248. What is the mitzvah of tshuva in a nutshell? So the Rambam says, mm-hmm. The mitzvah is that a sinner should return from his sin. Hashem. You have to remember you're doing this before God. We'll talk about this more as we get into Hilchis tshuva. We talked about it a bit last week. All the alchets we say, lefanecha. I can I confess for the sin that I did before you by speaking Lashin Hara. The word Lefanecha raises different questions. A person can say, I confess that I sinned by speaking Lashin Hara. That's not good enough. You have to say, I confess that I sinned before you and spoke Lashin Hara. Lefanecha. So the Ramam says, mm-hmm. A person has to do tshuva from the sin he's done right in front of Hashem. You have to place yourself in front of Hashem. And he has to say, Vidu. We're going to see how critical this word Vidu is to the Rambam. We're about to read the Rambam. The Rambam says that the mitzvah of tshuva, the way that you read the Rambam, literally, and the, a lot of Mepharshim of the Rambam do read him literally. The mitzvah to do tshuva is not to do the tshuva itself. The mitzvah is to say the vidui on the tshuva. So the Rambam now says, Perikrisha, first chapter of Gilchus Tshuva. Kol mitzvah shebetayra. Bein asay, bein los asay. Every mitzvah in the Torah, every one of the 613 mitzvahs, whether it's one of the 248 positives or one of the 365 negatives, im over odom al achas mehen, if a person violated one of the 613 mitzvahs, he didn't eat matzah and pesah, so he violated one of the 248 positives. He didn't eat in the sukkah. He violated one of the 248 positives. He ate chazah. He violated one of the 365 do-nots. Or he was mechal Shabbos. He violated one of the 365 do nots. Bain Bezodin, whether he did this intentionally, Bain Beshkaga, whether he did it as a show gig, Kshiyaset Shuva, the Yashur Mecheto, when the person does Shuva and he's going to return from his sin, Chayev Lehis Vados, a person's required to do the Vidui, the confession. That's a very bad word, confession. So I'm going to stop using the word confession, and I'm going to continue using the word vidui for reasons we'll see 
as we develop this concept in the Rambam. Lefnei hakel baruchu. There you go. The Rambam emphasized it again as he emphasized in the caption. A person must say vidui right in front of God. Now, everything's in front of God. The Rambam is emphasizing for us here, it's lifonecha. A person has to be able to um, um, put himself in the presence of God and be able to utter alchet shechatonu lifonecha. Achayev lisvadeis lifnei hakel baruchu. Shenema, how do I know that there's a requirement to say vidui? Remember, the Rambam is going to talk about 613 mitzvahs. The Rambam just told us that tshuva envelops one of the 248. The Rambam can't make up mitzvahs. For the Rambam to say something's a mitzvah, he must turn to a posik in the Torah and say, this is the posik that says you have to do it. If there's no posik in the Torah, you can't make up a mitzvah. You can make a mitzvah the Rabbanim. But if you have no Pasuk, it can't be a biblical requirement. So the Rambam says, here's the Pasuk that you have to say Vidui. He doesn't bring down a Pasuk that says you have to do Tshuva. He brings down a Pasuk that when you do Tshuva, you have to say Vidui. Shenema, the Pasuk says, Ish o Isha ki yasu mikol adam, a man or a woman who perform any sin, v'hisvadu es chatosam asher osu. And they shall say vidui on the sin that they did. That's the pasuk. It's in Bamid Perakei. Ze vidui dvarim. This means to be misvade with your mouth. And there's a great amount of discussion here about whether someone just thinks the vidui instead of actually uttering it from his lips. He thinks it. Whether you yoytz of the mitzvah of vidui. The Rambam now says vidui ze mitzvah ase. The vidui, the confession, quote-unquote, is the positive mitzvah. So when the Rambam at the top of the page said that the mitzvah of tshuva encompasses one mitzvah of the 248 mitzvahs, I say, and he says the mitzvah is that when you do tshuva, you have to say vidui, he means what he says. He says here, vidui ze, it is this vidui that's the mitzvah, I say. The mitzvah say not to do chu. And the Mepharshim talk about what does the Rambam mean here? What do you mean it's not a mitzvah to say to do chu? Why does the Rambam say the mitzvah is the vidui? And the logic that's brought down in many form is simple. If a person did naveira, there's no mitzvah to do chu. If you went off the derech, you got to come back to the derech. I mean, if you're off the derech, the, the Baruch Shalom says, here's the pair. The person goes off the pair. Kaddish Baruch who's not giving you a mitzvah to say, can you get back on track? The Baruch Shalom is saying, when you get back on track, this is what you need to do. You need to say vidu. You can't just get back on track and move on. You can get back on track when you want to, and then there's a mitzvah to say vidu. There's no specific mitzvah that when you're off track and get back on track, that you're makayim a mitzvah getting back on track. It's a chiddush in the Rambam, but that's the Rambam's words. There are people that don't like this interpretation of the Rambam, and they sort of, to get out of this, they, I believe, twist the words of the Rambam. But that's what the Rambam says. The Rambam says twice. He said it in the caption, and he said it now as clear as day. Vidui zeh, it is this vidui mitzvah sase. It is this vidui that's a required mitzvah say. So if someone does tshuva, he's off the derech, and he comes back, and he's doing everything perfectly, it's wonderful. But if he never performed the mitzvah of vidui properly, he never has performed the mitzvah of tshuva properly. Does that mean he didn't do tshuva? Probably not. But in terms of being makayim that mitzvah, he wasn't makayim the mitzvah unless he did vidui properly. And this vidui is halacha. So now the Rambam says, if the vidui is the mitzvah, the vidui must have halacha. Ketzad mitzvah, the Rambam now says. So how do you say vidui properly? I'm sorry, I'll never do it again. What do you have to say? Oimer, this is the basic vidui. 
Ona Hashem, please God. Chatasi, I've sinned b'shogeg inadvertently. Avisi, I've sinned b'mezid intentionally. Pashati, I even sinned against you as an act of revolt. I just wanted to do something. I didn't benefit from it. I didn't have a Yetzirah to do it. It's sort of lahachis. I just went against you. Lefanecha. And this was done lefanecha. That's part of the vidui. I did it right in front of you. It's a double avera as we spoke about last week. The Rebbe Shalom says, don't talk Lashin Hara. You go talk Lashin Hara. That's an avera. But if you realize that you're in the presence of God all the time, not only did you speak Lashon Har, you spoke Lashon Har right in front of the king. The king said, don't do that. And right in front of the king, you did that. So now you have two things going on. First, you spoke Lashon Har, and perhaps even more serious than that, you revolted against the king. The king's standing right there watching what you do, and you went right against it. Vasisi kachvaka. And I did this and this, and a person would fill it in. And that's one of the purposes of the alchet. Lofari es You don't just say, I sin. Chotasi ovisi upashati. And you fill in what you want to be excusing the svada for. Vahareni chamti. And I regret what I did. Uvoshti, vavoshti vamasai. And I'm ashamed of what I did. And I'm never going to do this again. So the vidui encompasses all of tshuva. The vidui is, please God, I avisi, chatosi, avisi, pashati, by doing this and this and this. And I regret doing this because I'm ashamed of what I did. And I'm never going to do it again. So when we talk about the ikare tshuva, which people quote many times, the Kare Tshuva is Charata Al Ha'ovar, regretting what you did in the past. Kabola Al Ha'osit, accepting upon yourself never to do it again. And Vidu. Those are the three component parts. And the Rambam in the Vidu he puts them all together. Please God, Chatosi, Avisi, Pashati, and I did this and this. I regret and I'm ashamed of what I did, and I'll never do it again. So you have everything now in the Vidu. Not only does a person, according to the Rambam, say, I regret what I did, but I'm ashamed of what I did. I'm ashamed. Now there's, if you remember in the Alchet, the Alchets that we say, Yom Kippur, we have an Alchet that says, Alchet shechatosi, Alchet shechaton lofanecha, bevidui peh. I confess to you, again using the word confess, I confess before you, God, for the sin of confessing. I am confessing to you, God, that I've sinned before you with my confession. Why are you confessing that you are confessing? You're confessing that you're improperly confessing. The vidui has to be absolutely sincere and true to the kishkis. If it's not sincere and true to the kishkis, you have a new avera. You're standing in front of Baruch Shalom and saying, I regret what I did. I'm never going to do it again. And I'm ashamed of what I, I regret what I did. I'm ashamed of what I did. I'm never going to do it again. And if you're not wholeheartedly into it, to the kishkis, you have a new sin. I'm confessing to you in an insincere way. So when a person says, I regret what I did, I'm ashamed of what I did, we're not talking about a sense of shame for which a person needs psychological help. We're talking about a sense of shame where a person is able to say to himself that I am better than this. This is not something that I should have done because I'm a Yid. I'm a Ben Yisrael. This is something that spasnish. How could I have done such a thing when I look back at it? This is not me. It's not who I was. It's not who I am. And there's a certain sense of shame that goes into that. And we're not Chasushom talking about a sense of shame where a person, Chasushom, goes into a depression. We're talking about a sense of shame where a person um, 
Rabbi Yeruch Mulevavitz or the Ravolbi would say, a person out of his sense of who he is, out of a sense of who you are, you look back sometimes and say, I can't believe I did that. I am so ashamed that I did such a thing. And now because I'm so ashamed of what I did, I can never do this again because now I feel that sense of shame. I'm never going to do that again because I never want to feel the sense of shame. So these things lead into each other. On Hashem, please God. Chatosi, Avisi, Pashati, I did this and this and this. I regret what I did and I'm ashamed of it and I'm never going to do it again because I never want to feel the sense of shame again. So I'm never going to do it again. And that's the Ramam says, Zeu Ikre Shel Vidui. This is the Ikre Vidui. This is basic Vidui. Now you notice in the Rambam, in this Vidui, which the Ramam says is the Ikre Vidui, this is the Ikre of the Vidui. This is basic Vidui. If you say this sincerely, you yoyt some mitzvah Vidui. Nowhere in the sense does it say, God, please forgive me. It says, please God, I did this and this and this and this. I regret what I did. I'm ashamed of what I did. I'm never going to do it again. And you don't ask God to forgive you. The Ram doesn't have that in his vidui. That's a separate issue of asking for the slicha and the kapar pointing to the Rambam. This is the mitzvah vidui. And this is one of the 248 mitzvahs I say. Now, you don't have to do vidui on Yom Kippur. And Yom Kippur, we're going to learn that it's a special mitzvah to say vidui. This can be done any time during the year. A person feels that he's done something and he wants to do tshuva. You're not supposed to say, okay, in a couple months will be Yom Kippur, I'll say dal A person can say, <clears throat> put yourself into a room, wherever you are, think to yourself about what you did, think to yourself about how you never want to do it again, and then say, on Hashem, chatasi, avisi, fashati, lefanecha, for asisi, and I did this, 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 and this, and this. Hare nichamti, uvoishti b'masai, uloi l'menecha is done b'zem. And yoytza mitzvah of vidui shleif tshuva. Any day of the year, Yom Kippur, it's a special mitzvah to do this. V'chol amabel is vada sumach b'yin azeh, someone that uh, is mayrech in his vidui, Right. He's a marba. He's, uh, as we just said, he doesn't wait Yom Kippur. He says vidui, and he and he elongates the vidui. He expresses his regret and remorse, and he and he talks about it. He talks it out in front of Hakadosh Baruch Hu. I raise him a shabbat. He's praiseworthy. The chaybali chatois v'ashom is based on a vehicle of meseim ashigosam al zdoinam. A meskaplem bekobon achias tshuva yisvadu vidu dvarim shenema vehisvada ashachot ole. The same thing is true for a person who's required to bring a carbon chatos or carbon asham. Somebody violated Shabbos b'shogei, or someone did something for which an asham is required. He doesn't get a kapara if he just brings the carbon. You have to bring the carbon. You have to do tshuva. And you have to say vidu. And the Ramam gets that again from a Pasik, Vizvada Shachot Oleh. Vachain kol Mukhuyobe Misa space and Mukhovi Malkis, A Miskapal Hab Misos Obil Kiyosam, Achiasu Chubi Yisvadu. The same thing is true. Lailain or a person committed a sin for which he's going to be executed by Basin. Hasra a person committed a sin for which he's going to get Malkis. The the execution. Or well, the Malkus is not going to be a Kapora either. <clears throat> Unless the person did Shuva before. And he also says Vidri. The Gemara in Sanhedrin learns this out that Kol Hamumasim Misvadim. Before a person, Loyalena, was executed by Bezdin, he said Vidri. In order for any of these things to be Machapa, whatever punishment it is, a person has to say, do Shuva and say Vidri. Otherwise, the punishment is not going to be Machapa. The same thing is true if you you damage your friend, you hurt him. We're not going to get into now insulting. That's a separate subject later in the Rambam. You hit your friend and you cause damage. Or you caused him monetary damage. You cause physical damage or monetary damage to, your, to another person. 
even if you pay him back what you owe him. He still doesn't have a kapar. Just by paying someone back, you don't have an atonement for the sin of having damaged him physically or financially. In order to get the kapar, you have to do the tshuva. I'm never going to do it again, etc. All the ikare tshuva. And you have to say vidui. On Hashem. That I hurt my friend or I hurt a person, Ruvain. I, I hurt him, damaged him physically, monetarily. I've paid what I'm supposed to pay back to him. I'm ashamed of what I did and I'll never do it again. And now you can get a kapara for what you've done. And this is the halacha of vidui, which the Rambam considers the mitzvah of tshuva. The, the Rabbanu Shalom is not coming to anybody and saying, you're off the derech, get back on the derech. That's going to be something you want to do. When you get back onto the right derech, you're now on the right derech, Baruch Hashem. And if you want to get through the mitzvah of tshuva, once you're back on the derech, now you say vidui, and that appears to be from the literal language of the Rambam, the mitzvah is the vigorous.